1986, we had a rich Japanese man who came to see me. His name was Mr. Sasagawa. And he had unlimited money, and I formed a partnership uh, with a, a doctor of agriculture who won a Nobel Peace Prize. And, and we started helping small farmers in, in, out in Africa increase their production of food grain. We didn't deal with cotton and tobacco and so forth, just with things to eat. And these farmers ordinarily had only two acres. They call it one hectare, usually. And we taught them how to increase their production of food grains on their own farms. And we eventually got this program going in 15 countries. And we taught 8 million families, farm families, how to double or triple their production of corn and wheat. They call corn maize over there. Maize and wheat and sorghum and millet and uh, rice just things to eat. So that was a wonderful program for us, and, and a lot of times when I was there, I thought about ABAC and how the things that I learned from ABAC I was giving to these farmers over in Africa so they could have more income from their very small portions of land. And we taught them how to plant in rows, which they never had done before. We taught them how to control their weeds and, and how to harvest at the right time and so forth. It was a very wonderful experience for us. The uh, Carter Center also deals with uh, peace, uh, I think go to countries and negotiate peace agreements when they have a civil war or when they have a likelihood of going to a war with another country. Uh, and, and we also promote democracy and freedom. We just finished our 98th troubled election in the world uh, this past week in Tunisia. As you may remember, Tunisia was the first country that experienced the so-called African Spring or, or African Awakening, whatever you want to call it. And they had a very successful election and we're just getting returns in now. But my wife and I generally go to those countries and we listen to what's going on ahead of time and on election day. We cover the country as best we can and we, and we give a report at the end on whether the election was safe and free and fair. Those are the kind of things that the Carter Center does. But the main thing we do is to, is to deal with, uh, with diseases that are no longer known in the, third, in, in, the, in the developed world, even countries like China or, or, in, or, China or India or Egypt don't have these diseases. They are diseases that even the doctoral students here would never know about. Trachoma and rubber blindness are the two primary diseases that afflict the eyes. And uh, this, all, this year in all, we'll treat, the Carter Center will treat about 36 and a half million people so they won't go blind or have these other diseases. One terrible disease that we dealt with is called trachuncolysis or guinea worm. Guinea worm we found when we started on this in 1986 uh, afflicts afflict uh, people in 20 countries, three in Asia and, and the rest of them in Africa, and about three and a half million people were found that year with guinea worm. This year, instead of three and a half million cases, we got it down to less than 100 cases. Wow. And it'll be the second disease ever eradicated from the face of the earth very soon. Guinea worm is not mentioned in the Bible, it's the fiery serpent. You may remember when, they, when the Israelis were coming out of Egypt out of slavery, they were afflicted with what they call the fiery serpent. And you know the symbol for medical doctors with a staff, with a serpent wrapped around it? Those, those are guinea worms. Because the only way you could treat guinea worms before the Carter Center got involved was uh, they come out of the people's bodies, they're about a yard long, wow. and they, uh, they are ingested by drinking filthy water that has guinea worm eggs in it, and then a year later the worm grows this long, and it, it stings the inside of the epidermis of the skin, and it takes about 30 days to come out. And it's, and the pain is, is excruciating. You can hardly stand it. So the old treatment was just to wrap the guinea worm around a stick about the size of a pencil and put a little bit of pressure on it, not enough to break it, which might be fatal, but to get it to come out in 20 days instead of 30 days. And until we got started a few years ago, that was the only way you treated guinea worm. But now we just about do away with it on the face of the earth. Well, I think